What is up guys, this is Olympio, coming at you with a discussion video on simply quite a difficult question. I do realise that was quite ironic using simply and difficult in the same sentence. It is a question as to what do you think, and in your personal opinion, is the best monster card, spell card, and trap card that have ever been released in the game. Now I do realise this is going to cause some hairline fractures down the community, possibly on this video, because there are going to be so many different opinions, because there are so many differently busted cards in so many differently busted ways. And it just means that it's going to be very difficult for people to think about what they th can think is and what they can pin down. You know, the best card is overall. I would try and steer you towards cards on their own that are just, you know, well-rounded and such. But if you so wish, you can use them in this enables this, 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 this. For example, Makiora on its own, its effect doesn't do anything. But when you combo it with certain cards, it just makes it absolutely ballistic. And like Exodia OTKs are very, very alive when that's the thing. But going into it, some notable mentions before I do say anything. We can look at Yatagarasu. It's just one of the best cards around, like one of the best spirits. The fact you can just lock your opponent down and game over, basically. Fiber Jar is just another one that was just so amazing. You could just set it, if you're in an awkward situation, you just restart the complete duel. Cyber Jar, just completely unbalanced. I, I realize that it, it gives your opponent the monsters back as well, if they so have them. If they can summon them, but it was just so good. It got you out of a tight spot and it was just so unbelievably broken. There is one card that sticks in my mind straight away when you think, what is the most broken monster card that is around? And to me, that straight away says, Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End. That card single-handedly won games at the measly cost of a light and a dark from the grave. It just OTK'd on its own as well. Like, you will probably have hit your opponent for some damage as well in the match. And you can just go attack for 3k, main phase 2, effect, blow everything up, inflict 300 damage per thing that dies. It's just so good. And it leaves your opponent in such an awkward situation as well. And even though it left you in the same situation, you were always one up on them. You affected their life points and it was very difficult then to kind of top deck. So, you know, it was, it was such an amazing thing that completely brought players to its knees. For the spells, spell, there are so many, so many amazing spells that have been hit the game. From early back in the day, you've got the Pot of Greed, the generic plus one that anyone could use. The Grace for Charity, just the, the graveyard setup was incredible. Painful choice, like setting up your graveyard for four cards, it was just incredible. If it ever came back, it would simply break decks, like completely break them, even at one. So, well, that's one reason why it's not gonna come back. But for me, one of them that comes straight to mind is Raigeki. Raigeki, I feel, is the one of the most unbalanced spell cards out there because there is no downside to it and there is no cost to what you are doing. You are obliterating your opponent's field for nothing, for technically a minus one to you because you've used a card. But it's completely unbelievable because you are going to end up plussing when you take your opponent's field into consideration, because even if you just kill one of their monsters, you're balanced. So that card is just so amazing. I feel that it is one of the best spell cards in the game that has ever been printed. And then finally, we come into the traps. Traps have many amazing, amazing traps in the game. There's Imperial Order that was kind of just set up and fuck you. Your opponent couldn't do anything with their spells. It was such an amazing card, and it's such a tiny, tiny cost. And one that you didn't have to even pay either. You could just be like, oh, just activate it to block all your spells just to, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay life points. The card was so good. Exchange of the Spirit is another one. That card just never hit us, which I'm quite, <laughs> quite glad about. The OTKs for that one as well is just kind of unbelievable. And one Sixth Sense as well that we did have for a short while was very good and dumb, dumb advantage. The one that I think was the most broken is a toss-up. And I'll tell you the first one that hasn't made it, which is Ring of Destruction, because that card can never come back because it causes an OTK on its own. For example, you can special summon Malefic Cyber and Dragon, attack your life points, Ring of Destruction. Just killed them straight away in two cards. It just meant that you could basically attack Ring of Destruction, attack Ring of Destruction. It was just such a simple killing tool. But the best one, in my opinion, the best trap of all time was Crush Card Virus. I'm pretty sure a lot of people will agree with me on that one. I aren't too surprised that I've chosen that. But the card is simply 
ridiculously unbalanced and broken because it just drained your opponent completely, absolutely annihilated your opponent's resources. Back then we had big monsters, it was kind of a lot of big monsters when it was around and even though it was very hard to get obviously because it was a prize card, it was still stupid. If you got crush card off on your opponent you were probably going to win the duel because that's how absolutely breathtakingly good it was. And there was no way around it, really, unless you actually negated the effect. And when you took it into consideration with Sangan as well, ah, oh, this was just too good. Like, it was just so amazing, and it will never come back. So I want to know what you guys think, if you agree or disagree. And if you do disagree, what are the notable cards that you think are the best in Yu-Gi-Oh? So let me know down in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe, and I shall catch you guys later.